It has come to my attention from another YouTuber named Savage Geese that there are some awful trends for cars, and while I agree with almost all of his points, he left out his cousins of the two-wheeled variety. And I wouldn't be your illustrious and immortal boy Yammy Noob if I didn't deliver onto you the worst trends for motorcycles. While bikes aren't plagued by massive bloat tablets or pop-out door handles, seriously, it's so stupid. We do have quite a few items that are really hampering our enjoyment of bikes and are trends that will hopefully die down or get segmented into different niche parts of motorcycling. If this is your first time stopping by, be sure to subscribe to my channel. We're posting up two video essay slash list style videos per week and annihilating the motorcycle content game on YouTube. We're gonna make it to 1 million subscribers by 2020. That's a fat bet. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the trends. Winglets. Without a doubt, the number one worst trend plaguing motorcycles at this point are winglets. To those of you who are uninitiated, winglets are a new aerodynamic feature that's being bestowed onto track day special leader bikes, which allow for more control of airflow when you're being a fast boy on track. Car enthusiasts will be more than familiar with aerodynamic features. I'm reminded of the latest Porsche GT2 RS, which has more fins than the shark infested waters of South Africa. However, Aerodynamics are still relatively new to motorcycles. Since they're so much smaller and lighter, research and development is focused more on extracting power, creating more streamlined shapes to slip through the air, and, well, more power. Unless you've got power. <laughs> A top spec leader bike today can produce well over 200 horsepower, with something like the Ducati V4R producing about 240. Now, I know normies who are uninitiated in motorcycling might say, wow, 240 horsepower, that sounds so weak. My Focus RS has 350, but the name of the game here is power to weight ratios. A current gen leader bike is stupidly fast, like rip your arms off from trying to lift the front wheel fast, which is why time and attention has been devoted to keeping those wheels on the ground. Bikes nowadays have wheelie control, electronics, and all sorts of things to keep them on the ground and ripping around the track, but recently, they started slapping these winglets on. Where do they come from? Well, in the racing world of MotoGP, where 200 miles per hour is a weekly occurrence, they serve an incredibly functional purpose. But for a street bike, winglets are about as pointless as your appendix when it comes to street motorcycles. They serve as bragging rights for guys who dropped over 40 Gs on their motorcycle. Truly a silly trend. This leads me to my next worst trend, advanced electronics. Now this might be a little controversial. Me, I always tell it to. But I think the nanny state save your butt from crashing do it all electronics packages of modern motorcycles are doing us a disservice. Say what you will, but adding complications to a machine that's meant to symbolize purity and simplicity is a sin in my opinion. Do they make you go faster? Of course. Do they allow you to pretend MotoGP on the track and get some slide action? Sure, but a street motorcycle really does not need a six axis IMU to measure lean angle on your way to work. All it does is add unnecessary complication, cost, and weight to a bike. And don't get me wrong, I'm no Luddite. I think bikes should move towards a brighter and more optimistic future powered by technology. But I think we should segment bikes to have these features and others to not have them. I've ridden bikes that have these features and they just end up feeling a little muted. And maybe I'm just speaking for myself here. But motorcycling needs to retain an element of rawness. If I wanted a muted throttle feel, 15 different throttle modes, and nannies protecting my every move, I'll just drive a car. Speaking of which, it's a trend that's making its way into bikes as well that I'm not all about, TFT displays. TFT displays, or screen displays on bikes, are a travesty in my opinion. The visceral feeling of watching an analog tachometer rise above 10,000 RPMs as you sense the rush of an intake while your head is resting on the gas tank is the sort of thing that makes us bikers dream. The last thing I want is to jump on my motorcycle and see a gigantic tablet giving me the basic information that I can get through a much simpler dash. Again, it boils down to complexity, unnecessary complication on a simple machine and the propensity for said object to break down. But it's a double-edged sword and it's the price of progress. As motorcycle makers develop advanced electronics and sensors to monitor the health and data around your bike, it makes sense to have a display that reflects all that interesting data you can glean from these electronics. Another point to consider is that while tablets on your motorcycle's dash might add an expense for now, the trend is for all things to move towards marginal cost, and what is expensive today will be cheap tomorrow. Consider how expensive flat screen TVs were 10 years ago compared to now. The same principle applies to tech and bikes. And maybe I'm just sitting 
sitting here being curmudgeonly, but let's save the insane TFT displays for the race bikes that need it. Give me an analog tachometer any day of the week. TFT displays are really wearing me down. Up next is a personal pet peeve of mine, throttle by wire. I'm going to get lambasted for this one, but I think throttle by wire is a sin. If you've only ridden bikes that have throttle by wire, you don't understand the pure and visceral pleasure of a cable actuated throttle that's tuned correctly. The sharpness, the raw feeling of knowing that there's nothing between you and the throttle body opening except for a little set of cables. Throttle by wire is just one more step towards bikes becoming just like cars, being muted and bloated. And sure, there are benefits to throttle by wire. You can set up rider modes, throttle input, etc. But in reality, your right hand should be the indicator of throttle control. It should be what determines the output of your bike. You really shouldn't be able to whack open the throttle of a leader bike and nothing happens. You should get a jolt of acceleration that makes you question your agency as a free person in this world. You should question every bad decision you've ever made when you decide to go wide open throttle on a motorcycle with 200 horsepower, as if that was the choice you wanted to make today. Action should have consequences, but throttle by wire setups take that away from you. They make it so that any Joe Schmo can hop on Yamaha's latest R1 and pretend like he's Rossi. Is that the world we really want to live in? Or do we want merit? I think you know the answer. Next is another one of those car trends sort of trickling into motorcycles. Bloated fenders. Again, this is one that folks might find a little controversial, but new bikes are getting more and more bloated with their fenders, naked bikes notwithstanding. But the new crop of beginner bikes like the Ninja 400, which, by the way guys, I know you think I continuously beat up on the Littlest Ninja, but it's just an easy target. They're getting so fat. Look how puffy this thing is. Why? Why is it like this? It's not for crash safety. That's the excuse for cars becoming more and more bloated, and it's not for comfort. Bikes are much smaller, much more raw than cars by definition, so you can't really make them more comfortable in that way. So what gives? I think in an attempt to stir up sales and knowing that the kids are all about cool Transformer-esque styling for their bikes nowadays, manufacturers are just trying to make their bikes look crazy. See Yamaha's FZ10. It's a trend that I sorely wish would go away. Bikes don't need gigantic fenders. I'm all about crazy paint jobs though. Can we bring back the 90s neon and pink teal to make comeback? That would be amazing. The last trend I'm sick of seeing on modern bikes, massive horsepower. Look, I get it. Dick measuring is a way of life most of the time. Your buddy just got a new BMW 3 Series, maybe you need a 5 Series. Your buddy just bought a 200 horsepower motorcycle, looks like you need 220. I think there's definitely a point to be made about the overall progress and improvements the top spec leader bikes serve for motorcycling in general. That tech typically trickles down. However, I think we can do ourselves a favor by taking a step back and asking if we're really going to have more fun on a bike with that much power than something just a little bit more simple. And marketers are running into this problem as well. Inside sources say that bike makers are having a tough time reaching people who are interested in motorcycles through releasing a new version of last year's bike with just five more horsepower. It seems like that's just not moving the needle in terms of sales like it used to. And it looks like that point is being proven out with the likes of Aprilia's new RS660, a back to basics lightweight motorcycle with about 100 horsepower out of a parallel twin. A light bike with about 100 horsepower is plenty to have fun with and enjoy. Power isn't everything, boys. Remember that. I think we might look back on our current horsepower wars the same way the music industry is reckoning with the loudness wars. Consumers might shift towards desiring feel, fit and finish and fun more than outright speed. But then again, revealed preference is a hell of a drug. And I can almost guarantee most people enjoy dick measuring than they actually do enjoying their machines. But that's just my curmudgeonly hunch. That'll wrap it up for today, my dudes. What do you think? What are some of the worst trends you see in motorcycling? Do you agree with my points? Do you think I'm full of it? Either way, let me know in the comments below and voice your opinion. Remember to subscribe to the channel since we are crushing it out here, posting mad videos every week, twice a week. Huge shout out to the sponsors of this channel, Ridge Wallets. They've been awesome to me. I've supported the channel for a while now. They make these minimal, sleek, and affordable wallets, and it's pretty much the last one you're going to need. They've got some pretty awesome RFID blocking technology, but if you're not into that sort of thing, you can always test their bulletproof construction instead. If you click the link in the description below and use the code YAMI at checkout and get yourself 10% off your order, check the link in the description and get yourself hooked up. One more shout out, I am giving away a free motorcycle. That's right, I will be giving away a Honda Hornet CB900 to a lucky fan of one of my beginner bike build series. Check the link in the description below to learn how you could win this motorcycle and get started cracking mega dank woolies out in the streets. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. France was still executing people by guillotine when Star Wars A New Hope hit theaters. Sacre bleu. Goodbye.